and I hope that um, he will not really retire. He will be a person who will do conversation, who will still be an activist, who will stand for integrity, accept everyone's opinions, body, and care about the uh, Your advocacy work within the Filipino American community. There's a lot of people here, when you know, do you remember, do you remember the Operation Mango? Yeah. Um, yes. Sir, I mean, there are a lot of people in this Dale here. I know Lawrence was part of that. Maria Ferreira. Maria Ferreira, Jolene Andal. And so Operation Mango was a community-based um, survey because we wanted to know what was going on in the Filipino community because we didn't know in terms of health. So it's this grassroots thing where we, it was door-to-door, -door, Jerry was part of it, right? It was going out and figuring out what was going on within the Filipino community. And what I like about Jerry is, I'm reminded of this phrase, have you heard about Dreaming is just another way of planning, right? And what Jerry does is you allow us to dream, right? You allow us to dream, and then what happens is we plan, we execute, and then we do it, right? And so that's how a fire was born, right? Because out of that survey, we found out about the Filipino health needs, about, right, about heart disease, and how we need to do something. And now, what do we have? We have this Filipino-led run, advocacy organization teaching our communities about our health in a way that's respectful to our community. So, Jerry, thank you so much for that. Ang tao, ang bayan, ngayon ay lumalaban. Thank you very much, Jerry. You, I really miss you. Okay, I'm older than you. I'm supposed to retire. Great, before you. I'm already retired, but I'm still working. So I tell you, Jerry is not retiring. Standing Filipino American mainstream advocate, Mr. Jerry Carrido. In recognition of his unselfish dedication and commitment to community service to empower the Filipino Americans in building human bridges into the mainstream. As one of the peers, as one of his peers in our immigrant struggles for equality in America, I could attest that Jerry is one humble community builder. And, but really their leadership to grow, right? And I think that that is what Jerry is doing by stepping away and hibernating. That's right, right? Because um, people don't know what they can do until they have to. So I think that is actually the greatest mark of leadership is to uh, identify new ones, uh, identify those who can not only replace you but surpass you because that is our job as leaders. And so I want to give a great appreciation to Jerry for what he has demonstrated uh, to all of us about what great leadership looks like and to be able to trust that we will carry on his legacy. So thank you very much. Well, first of all, thank you all for being here. I guess uh, this is really all of us saying thank you to Jerry for all that you've done. And um, I get very emotional about this. Because I've known Jerry for as long as I've been here in this country, so this is a lot for me. And uh, and I know he's not leaving. Like everybody said, he's just going to be stepping back. Um, and I, all I could say is I envy you, and I also told to it. I mean, I wish I could go on sabbatical too, uh, but I guess I have to wait a couple more years before I could either go on sabbatical if I can, or. I'm ways down from uh, retiring, but there's always early retirement, right, Jerry? But um, um, I, ha I don't have enough words to uh, express um, my own personal gratitude. It was a panel discussion about uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Um, it was at Advancement Justice. Um, v was the MC, um, and there was a person there who was speaking some super radical things, um, and it was Christina, um, and she mentioned that she was working at this organization called A Fire, and I was like, say what now? Um, so I, I, I swear, I went home that night, emailed my cousin who works at Advancing Justice in DC, and I was like, okay, there's these two organizations who are really radical, okay, like, there's one's Advancing Justice, like, do you know anyone there? I'm like, okay, 
I'll email that person. He's like, do you know this other person uh, at a fire, Jerry Clarito? Um, and he emails me back. Jerry is the man in the Midwest. <laughs> like, if you're like, if you're looking to do anything in terms of you know advocacy or, or human rights uh, in Chicago, you need to be talking to Jerry. Um, never heard back from him. Have seen justice? I know. Um, <laughs> uh, but Jerry was really quick to email back. Uh, um, and Jerry invited me out to the office. Uh, it was. A, I was like, I couldn't find it. I don't know if you've seen Jerry on a whiteboard, but um, he started laying out this analysis of everything. It was. It was so radical and beyond anything I'd ever comprehended in Texas. Let alone from. Let alone from another Filipino. Like, I couldn't believe it, and and uh, it spoke to the deepest core of something that I felt like I'd always been meaning to do. In, in our work, we talk a lot about consciousness raising and political education. Um, and it was in that moment, in that first, when you were scribbling and writing down the gears and, and all of it, and talking about decolonizing minds, anti-Marcos, all of it, when I felt like something woke up. Um, and my eyes opened for the first time, and I've been able to see things and learn things um, that I've never been able to see this before. Um, this, we will talk about everything, um, and it's in those moments uh, that I really appreciated your mentorship, um, your guidance. Um, and looking at you not just as a boss, but now as a friend and a colleague um, and as a mentor. Um, and I really appreciate everything you've done for me and everything um, that you've been able to impart and the wisdom you've been able to impart in me. And I hope continue to do so um, because without you, I would not be the person who I am today. Thank you. Enjoy. Thanks, Michael. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Tommy. Uh, for those of you that know me, I'm a professional political schmoozer at the <laughs> Illinois State Controller's Office. And for those that, that really, really know me, I was once the uh, past uh, Filipino club president in my high school. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, representing, you know? So when I, when I first started this job, I was really, really excited to reconnect with my fellow Filipino brethren. Uh, but you know, I didn't really know anyone in the community. And one of the first people I met was Jerry Clario. And you know, Jerry and I, we're, we're on the opposite ends of the political spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay though. But you know, I, I really appreciate Jerry. You know, he always took me in with open arms, always showing me around. And my time with Jerry, I think one of the most important lessons I learned Working in government, you need to listen to the people. And that's something you know, I learned very quickly from Jerry. He educated me on all the issues, what's important, and I really appreciate all the time you know, we spent together. And I'll, I'll never forget my, uh, my first meeting with Jerry at a fire, uh, just right by the print shop. I, I was also a little confused. Um, <laughs> so someone, someone tipped off Jerry that I was uh, Inchel's kid. So the whole time Jerry's just smiling, grinning at me, he's like, I want a building like Gats. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, I, I, I'm sorry, man, state's broke, we got no money. Like, <laughs> so, uh, you know, from there, you know, as, as we, our friendship grew, and, you know, he's introduced me to all these community leaders, you know, Jerry, Jerry would introduce me as, you know, as Korean, but he's an honorary Pinoy, and, you know, that, that really meant a lot to me, you know. So, um, and, you know, when, when I was building our uh, Asian American Advisory Council for Judy Bartopinka, I really, really wanted Jerry on there. But I just wasn't sure how, you know, if he would say yes, because, you know, she's Republican. I don't know if Jerry would want to be a <laughs> uh, so, so I talked to Jerry about it, and right away he was very enthusiastic about it. And he said yes, and, you know, I'm really thankful that you were on there, and you, you just educated uh, all of us on the importance of CIR and, and you know, the issues. And, you know, in our first meeting with uh, Controller Munger, she said the same thing, too. Uh, she, you know, she had a lot of respect for what you said at that meeting. 
And you know, I really appreciate you also being there when uh, when Judy passed. I, like, you were one, one of the few uh, Asian community leaders that were there, so that, that really meant a lot to me. Um, so today, you know, in the state of Illinois, I wanted to recognize you for the legacy. I know there's no such thing as retirement. You know, you'll be around. I'll, I'll, I'll call you in a month. You know, so. <laughs> enjoy your trip to the Philippines. But we wanted, we wanted to uh, recognize the legacy, the leadership, and everything you've done for our community. So I do have a proclamation for you. And the proclamation reads, um, my heartiest congratulations go out to Jerry Clarita on retirement from a fire. For 10 years, your selfless dedication of time and efforts for the success of fire have been evident throughout the community. You have displayed great leadership and have been an outstanding advocate for all immigrant and refugee communities and families. May you always look back on your career with much satisfaction, knowing that you have made a true impact in the lives of others. On behalf of the Illinois Office of the Patroller, I wish you many congratulations and continued success in your future endeavors. Signed, Leslie Munger. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess you have designed what I have to do next. <laughs> so I'm moving my retirement hat. <laughs> and then next is uh, the meaning of red. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, this help us pass the uh, domestic workers bill of rights. <laughs> Yeah, oh my. Uh, thank you for those uh, kind words. And I didn't realize that's me. Uh, but I guess the love that you're giving me uh, is more, I think, appropriate for, for my wife. Uh, I just, I think I just tried to fake that I know. Request. I will ask, do I, do I have time for uh, a meeting? Go ahead. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think this is more of uh, acknowledging uh, the mirroring. What you told me is actually you. you know, so, so that I think what I've learned is actually to just mirror back what you're saying or what you think of me. And I, I hope I, I play that role of mirroring who you are. These people really committed to uh, build the better future for all of us. And, and, and thank you, Tommy, for uh, reminding all of us uh, the different uh, political parties <laughs> are just the reality of it. But what's more important, I think, is the relationship uh, that we show to each other. Right? So you could say that I'm a leftist or <laughs> radical, but I have so many rightist attitudes too. So I, I guess with, without you opening the doors for me to reflect, I won't be able to actually respond back. Right? Uh, as Josie was saying, if she didn't allow me, if she was not thinking that there's something else that I can do, then I won't be able to do it. Right? So she opened the door uh, for me to think of uh, creative ways of uh, making sure that I will actually uh, deliver the outcomes, but at the same time, uh, making sure that her uh, interest is also addressed. So I think that's what I've learned early on, that each one of us has our own self-interest. Right? And sometimes we just say it differently, but it's, it's still your self-interest. And sometimes you pass it to others. And that's what I think I uh, learned, that if I know your self-interest, and you will know my self-interest, then we will be together. We will be working together to achieve those two self-interests, right? So, they was the first one who opened opened uh, the basement of uh, Kali. So, say, if you don't have any office, just come here. So, so he opened up that door. But then I realized too, he needs me too because then I will become a member of Kali. 
<laughs> so something like that, like uh, the the of Operation Mango is that because all those researchers want to they want to come up with a document, right? So that's their self-interest. And my self-interest is actually to know the community too, right. through them. So, so reflecting back, uh, the values that you think I have are also your values. Is that right? So when you were speaking here, I think I was listening to you, not to me, not to what you, who you are than me. I know, uh, yeah, I will not go to stop uh, serving the community because that's the only thing I've learned in being an activist in the Philippines is that two words from mouth sedum, say, serve the people, right? Serve the people, oh my gosh, so simple, serve the people. And once you do serving the people, people will just haunt you. Why are you doing that? Right, when you do serve the people, they question your intention to serve people. So I thought, I thought that was so easy, but it's actually hard to serve the people. And the issue of service, advocacy, power organization, it's, it's a continuing dialogue because we still, still trying to find the organization or form of organization that will really change the world, that oppression will be eliminated, that racism will be eliminated, that people with integrity will be elected. Mm. Right? So I think we are still, it's good that there are the second gen, the first gen who are here, because this is the challenge of the time, I think, that we're trying to find the best organization that will really reflect what we want to be in the future. The future that we're creating, not just for us, but for the next generation. That there will be no racism. That there no, no one going to ban uh, Muslims. That immigrants are accepted. Right? That immigrants are not rapists. But we, the current atmosphere, we, we are still allowing those people to say those without any repercussions. So we, uh, people who are affected, are still trying to think what, how, what's the best way to counter this. And, and Chicago is, the Philippine of American community is, is diverse, very diverse. <coughs> Not to say the other <laughs> aspect of it. It's just so diverse. And this is what I was telling uh, Michael, that in all the chaos, the secret is to find the harmony mm. in diversity. Mm. Right. So, Bibliography, editing and reporting. This is Joseph Gelariosa of the journal Global Links in Chicago, Illinois. JGLI.net.